it was quite lonely at times. I couldn't really relate to anyone. You know, I didn't really know where I belonged. You know, did I have to commit myself 100% to one certain style of living? And one passion uh, and, and have to close the door on, on the other half of myself. And it was difficult, you know, I never really felt like I fit in anywhere. It was magical growing up on a farm. I could ride before I could walk. I was put straight on a pony. Never forced into it, which was quite important, I think. You know, I had my whole family around me. Um, we were real, really close. You know, from my mother to my father, my brothers and sisters. And it, it was just childhood every, every kid dreams of. Riding's one of those things you do, to some degree, have to have that natural ability. You have that natural connection with the horse. But I was very grateful because I had, you know, I had my mother. To this day, I haven't met a, a horseman more superior than her. You know, she was just, she was just, a, she was a fountain of knowledge. And at the time, I was just a sponge. I sunk, it just everything sunk in. The results started to come and with that, my passion grew for it, and I did realize, you know, this is this is where where I belong. Riding has always been a passion, but I, I found a new love in the shape of the skateboard. It wasn't a form of rebelling, and I didn't do it for the image. You know, it was just that need of progression that that pushing yourself, you know, I just relished off it. I got to the age of about 14, 15, and, and my skating really took off. You know, I got myself a small time sponsor. I was traveling around the country competing in competitions. It was just incredible. When I was skating and I was with all my, my, my skating friends, I was always embarrassed to let them know about my riding. They just, they probably wouldn't take me seriously. It was, it was just a case of living two different lives. My riding was progressing by the day, and to this day, you know, I don't know how I, I managed to balance the two because they were just, they're just polar opposites. It was quite lonely at times. Despite having all the support from my family and my mum and dad and everything, I couldn't really relate to anyone. You know, I didn't really know where I belonged. It had its days where I just I didn't really feel like I had anyone that could understand I mean my skateboarding was winning that competition getting that sponsor you know it's all about that and and the riding was exactly the same but with surfing for whatever reason I just never felt that need for progression I never felt that competitiveness when you are out on that water with your board and you're just on your own you know every single worry just fades away. Surfing will be something I, I will I'll do to the day I die. You know, it's my ultimate getaway, and I'm, I'm very grateful to have it. I certainly didn't lose my love for skating, but I was getting to that age where I had to, you know, I had to think of that career, I had to think of that next step. And the modern era of skating, people are pushing the limits. What people do on a skateboard now is just you can't imagine it. To be at that top, you have to be beyond talented. You know, stuff that guys were doing in competitions with me, I couldn't do that, you know, I couldn't do the tricks they were doing, I couldn't, I couldn't skate the way they were skating. Um, I wasn't good enough. Without necessarily hanging up my board, things did just quieten down on the skateboarding front. You know, these guys, they live and breathe skating. You know, they wake up at seven in the morning and they pick up their board and 
they don't get back until seven at night. You know, that's all they do, skate, skate, skate. As much as I would have liked to have done that, I couldn't do that because six days of the week, I was riding horses. And it was great to have that balance and have the skating and the riding. But if you want to take one of them to the next level, you have to commit yourself 100%. I mean, it's grand being mediocre at both. I wanted to be better than that. And, you know, my skating had reached its limits and I'd had a great time doing it, but it was time to move on. You know, my riding was progressing by the day. I was becoming more involved with, with the business. I was making frequent trips to, to the sales with mum um, and I was competing a lot more. Just on a whole, my, my riding was improving literally by the day. It became pretty clear to me then that, that this is where my future lay. And I was, I was ready to commit myself sort of 100% to that. You know, we were so incredibly close. And, it, you know, it was amazing having that connection with her. It was an incredible time in my life. Yeah, so the, the 20th of February, 2012. I was in the menage, uh, schooling a horse with mum. We just bought this horse from Ireland. And he was only young and we, we thought a huge amount of him. And we were talking about his, his future to the finest of details, you know, where, where we're gonna send him, where we're gonna compete him. There was just so much excitement about it and it was such a build up. And at the time I had absolutely no idea that would be the last conversation I'd have with her. She died moments later of a stroke. At the time, as a 16-year-old boy who has just lost the most influential figure in his life, I was just absolutely crushed. But my future, you know, was a, it was a long road with bright lights. In an instant, the lights just went out. I was just floating. I had no sense of direction, no sense of just anything, really. I was just completely lost. That pain never goes away, it just numbs. You just become tough to it. But it will be there to the day you die. It will always be there. It was my dad. He was just my rock. It wasn't just me, I didn't just lose a mother, he lost a wife. You know, it was someone he loved and been with for his entire life. And it was as hard for him as it was for any of us, but he was just an absolute rock. You know, w without him, I, I don't know if I would have got, got through that stage in my life. You know, one thing I, I took from the whole experience is that one thing you can't stop is time. Weeks were going past, you know, life has to go on and you know, you can't stay in this in this state forever. I think with that, we just realized for her, for, for her memory more than anything else, you know, we had to move on and we had to carry the show on and, and get on with our lives, you know, it's what she would have wanted. You know, mum had, had built herself a reputation as, as one of the best producers of sport horses in the entire country. You know, her name was known all over the world. It was a huge loss, not just for our family, but just for the world of equestrians, because, you know, she was such a talent. You know, it was very, it was very moving for me when we had all these letters in through people just saying, you know, how much they thought of her. That was huge for me. On the path I was on, you know, she was my she was my trainer. She wasn't only my mother, you know, she she was teaching me everything she knew, but there was still so much left to teach. And the path I was on, I just couldn't feel I could continue it without her. After a long talk with dad, I made a decision that I was gonna pursue a career as a, as a professional jockey. I told the rest of the family and my friends and 
and understandably everyone laughed at me you know they they thought I was mad you know we're not a racing family but one thing did stick with me since the day mum did die is that you know whatever it was I was going to do I was going to make her proud and I was going to do it for her and I was well aware that this was going to be the most difficult task I've ever undergone but you know if it, if it wasn't it wouldn't be worth it you know, I have always had that need for adrenaline, that buzz, you know, and it just appealed to me. You know, traveling over 30 miles per hour on a, on a racehorse, just did give me a buzz like nothing else. And I just thought it was something I could, I could do if I, if I put my mind to it. I wasn't prepared for how mentally tough it was gonna be. That mental side of things, coping with those losses and just the general pressures of the whole sport, that was probably my biggest struggle no matter what you do actually the most important thing is your reason for doing it when you have those incredibly bad days you've got to think back to why you're doing it that will get you through anything you know i'm doing this not for me i'm doing it for my mother having that behind me makes you feel invincible when i walk away from racing i want to be able to say mum would be proud that would be good enough for me